Good afternoon. Hello there and welcome into Mary's Kitchen. How are you all doing today in isolation? Uh, we have just been told that we've got another three weeks. That's going to be just wonderful. Um, but I thought I'd just bring a bit of joy into your kitchen and do some cooking for you. So carrying on with the Indian theme, which is one of my favorite, favorite foods. I'm just waiting to see if somebody comes on live here because I always like to see a little eyeball. Yep. I see a couple of people. Hi, Paula. Nice to see you, Paula. My friend in Florida and Paula and Pamela Barge. Hi, Pamela. Um, carrying on with two themes here, really. Uh, I just saw a lot of people coming on. Hi, Carol. How are you? And Leah. And Kathy, how are you? Thanks for the pictures, Kathy. Very nice. And Joy, hi, from Nova Scotia, terrific. And Rosalind, wow, you guys are from all over the place today. Connie Ann, Susan, you're on, my niece, Susan Taylor. She works in, uh, she lives in Perth, Ontario. Nice to see you, Susan, thinking about you all the time. Must be pretty rough having to work every day. Hi, Catherine, and Peter, how are you? Hi, Cookie, and Samantha, and Mary and Maureen and Pamela. Wow, you're piling on here today, terrific. I just like to try and say hello to everyone as you're coming on. Trish, how are you? How's your chilies doing? Have they grown another inch yet since the last time I was on here? And Jerry Lynn? Leah, you're in Phoenix, great, great to see you. Welcome into Mary's Kitchen and Debbie. Gloria, good morning. <laughs> wow, you just, you're, you're, oh, Amanda, good to see you. I hope Maureen comes on, Amanda. Can't wait till you come back up to Edinburgh. Looking forward to that. Petra and taking Maureen out for a little cocktail. And Debbie and Maureen Bozek from Illinois. Hello. And Pamela, you're in the southern France. Oh, lucky you. What's the weather like? I hope it's wonderful down there. Julie, I'm doing just fine. Yes, I'm doing fine. I'm trying to uh, uh, negotiate the grocery stores with military precision with my mask and my gloves on, but I went down there today and <clears throat> they have a lineup outside and there was just too many people in the line. So I thought, no, I'm not gonna do that. So I went to another grocery store and looked and there was just too many people hanging around the doorway. So I didn't like the looks of that. So I'm going to try again tomorrow. But anyway, I've had enough ingredients here to make a beef keema. And I haven't had one for such a long time. It's a kind of a different type of curry. It's a more dry curry. And just to let you know, Sheila Hogan, how are you? Sheila Hogan's just down the street from me. Sheila, we can open our windows and say hello. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and Karen... And Mary from London, terrific. And Bobby from Bowness, Scotland. Hi, Bobby. You might know my friend Lorna Rayburn. She was from uh, Bowness. But she hasn't been there for quite a few years. Hi, Amy. Oh, you're piling on here today. Well, you, you, we're all isolated. I just like to come and do something for you in the kitchen and show you, like, there's two themes here at the moment going, is I've been cooking Indian dishes. So I've done the onion badgies and I did the spicy prawn curry for you. I like to see everybody coming on. Aaron, Leslie Lamb, how are you? Tell, uh, tell Andy I don't have a recipe for haggis. I've never made it. <laughs> That's a butcher job. <laughs> Hi, Bobby. Oh, you know Lorna well. Terrific. Well, Lorna might come on here. But I know she had to do some shopping at Aldi because she asked me if I wanted to meet her in the car park, social distancing. <laughs> so I said, no, not today because I'm doing some cooking. Hi, Jamie Button. Good to see you, love. Oh, I loved your family pictures on Easter sitting on the front, uh, on the front porch. They were terrific and Ga standing social distance away in the driveway, all drinking wine, wonderful. Naomi, I haven't seen you for a long time. How are you doing? Ah, <laughs> you're watching me, Amy from Canada, wonderful. And Lola, something new for you today, Lola. And Loretta? <laughs> 
Yes, Leslie, Tommy has to go to my butcher here in uh, Dunbar to pick up a, um, a haggis. He's a really good butcher. Uh, some of these girls that are coming on here won't know what haggis is and has probably never tried it. But <laughs> that's a story for another day. I'll have to fill you in on that one. Oh, Kathy, you're drinking too much wine. Is that unusual? <laughs> I think we're all going to end up in AA when this is over or at Weight Watchers. So far, I've lost a couple of pounds. I'm not sure why. Probably just not eating quite as much, uh, but probably drinking a little bit more, I would say. Oh, your husband's, Julie, your husband's waiting to see what I'm cooking. Okay, what's his name? <laughs> this is really, really easy. Um, what I'm trying to do, as I said, there's two themes going on here. Um, one, I'm doing Indian food just at the moment. And I bought this wonderful non-stick, very, quite deep, uh, uh, it's a salter frying pan. I'll tell you, it's really <clears throat> a nice bit of equipment. I love it. You don't have to put oil in it or anything. It cooks a fantastic, uh, you know, the tortilla wraps that I make and the sweet potato wraps, beautiful job. You only, all I do is I just take a little bit of uh, coconut oil and I just rub the pan with it uh, just to, so that the um, tortilla wraps get all nice and brown. But I love this. So the second theme is cooking everything in one pan. Now, of course, we're not gonna cook the rice in the same pan, but basically just to show you how easy it is to make one pan cooking. I know you have your crock pots and I know you have your air fryers. And, excuse me, these dishes can be very versatile in air fryers as well. Hi, Stuart, how are you? You're gonna learn to cook something today. Hi, Jeannie <laughs> and Carolyn. Okay, so I'll get started. Um, this is a beef keema. I don't make it very often, so it, this is kind of my version of beef keema and adding a lot more vegetable. Keema just means minced meat, ground meat, whether it's beef, pork, turkey, whatever. So you can versatile this dish into using turkey if you would like or uh, ground chicken, whatever you prefer. But I'm doing it with beef today. So I've got a pound of beef here. But the first thing I'm gonna do is put a little bit of oil in my pan, just about two tablespoons. I'm using olive oil. Use whatever kind of oil you like. It doesn't matter. If you got ghee, which is G-H-E-E, -E, which if you buy from the um, Indian shop, uh, I like to cook with that as well because it gives something a, a little nuttier and richer flavor. But anyway, today I'm using olive oil. If you've got sunflower oil, av avocado oil, rapeseed oil, whatever you want, okay? And I've got here two um, tablespoons of cumin seeds. And I'm going to put them in first just to flavor the oil up. As I said, you don't really need to put oil in this pan. And I'm sorry, this, normally I do the videos outside. It was too darn cold today, so I put my jacket on. And because you can see into the pan better what I'm doing. But anyway, I'll just explain it as I'm going along. Okay, so we got the cumin in there. Just about 30 seconds with the cumin. Just to flavor the oil. There we go. And then I'm going to take my pound of ground beef. Mint, we call it here, in Scotland. And then I'm going to put my onions in there with my beef too. So that's one chopped onion. And just break your beef down. You don't want hunks and balls of beef like you meat balls. You want it really, really quite fine and chopped up. So just do that first. This is a really, really tasty dish. It's not a wet curry, uh, real saucy. It's more dry, but it's a very, very delicious. Now, you know what else I was thinking? Since I was cooking uh, ground beef today. Hi, Les. How are you? Are you sitting comfortably on that beautiful penthouse suite of yours? Looking out the window. Say hi to Gail for me. Hi, Dana. 
You walked 6.2 miles this morning. Well done. Well, I didn't do two. I still have my Fitbit on. What did I do today? Uh, four kilometers today so far. So that's not too bad. So, anyway, I hope you're all sitting nice and comfortably there. I'm going to put my three cloves of garlic in next. This is just a bit of fun. I mean, I'm sitting in isolation as well. And to be honest with you, it gives me a reason to <laughs> take my pajamas off, wash my hair, and put my makeup on to come and cook for you, which I enjoy doing and showing you some new tips. Now, traditionally, a beef kima is just with a mixture of spices, etc., and frozen peas. But I'm going to add a few more things to mine. And the beef is just cooking up, getting browned up nicely. Yeah, I'm going to add a couple of things to my quinoa that normally you don't find in a quinoa. So just break, keep breaking your meat down as much as possible, okay? That's really important. That's why I like to use this little thing here. It's better than using a spoon because you can break it down very easily. So I've got three cloves of garlic in there now. And I'm going to put uh, a big heat tablespoon of chopped ginger, fresh ginger. It's really good for you as well. Ginger. Then you start, when I get all this stuff all prepped up in my kitchen, the smell throughout the whole kitchen is absolutely fantastic. Hi, Wendy Rose. Oh, Debbie, this is called uh, beef kima. And kima just means ground meat. Now, ground meat, we call it mince meat here. And uh, it's just another way. I mean, there's so many recipes for ground meat. Now, you know what I want to make? I was just thinking about it, a real old retro dish, sloppy joes. How would everybody like to come in my kitchen? Maybe on Sunday we'll make sloppy joes. Hi, Rusty. Rusty's my friend in Nova Scotia. And Petra, hi. Julie, hi. Okay, so I've got my ginger in there. I like to gas bag to you and talk at the same time. So I feel like that you're here in the kitchen with me. I've got about one carrot there, sliced up. I'm patting this dish out a bit, adding a few more vegetables than I normally would. Now I want to add my spices. I've got one uh, tablespoon of brown sugar here. Put that in. Just to sort of help caramelize the onions a little bit. It just adds a little extra flavor. Now here's to my spices. This is what we're putting in. I like to get everything ready before we start. It makes life much easier and you really know what you have. <laughs> Kathy. Your speciality was Sloppy Joe's. Well, we should make them. What day is it today? I don't even know what day it is when I get up. <laughs> it's Friday, I guess. Um, okay, I got here uh, ground uh, cumin, ground coriander, turmeric, chili, cardamom, two teaspoons of each of those, and one teaspoon of cinnamon. And I'm just going to center this out a little bit. And just pour that all in there. Mmm. Oh, wow. I can smell the cinnamon already. Oh, that smells good. Now, as I told you, this is quite a uh, sort of dry dish. And normally, some kimas, it depends on the different re regions of India as well, whether different things are added and not added. Uh, so I've got one uh, chopped tomato here that I'm putting in. I had a couple here. I was going to maybe put two or three in, but I decided I want to preserve these because I might need them later. So I'm just going to put one in. And that'll put a little bit of juice into the dish. So you can smell all the spices. I need some pepper in here. And I need some salt. If I have sea salt, I put sea salt, but I don't. About a teaspoon of salt. Or to your liking, salt to your liking. 
Okay, what other, what else are we doing here? Chili, I got one green and one red chili. I have put the recipe above. I mean, it's my own made up recipe. Uh, but it is above with all the ingredients. As I say, you can add any kind of vegetable you want here. I'm gonna add some cilantro, some coriander. And I'm saving a bit for topping it when I'm serving. I like fresh, put some fresh coriander on the top of my dish. And I'm going to have to just turn this down a little bit. And here I've got one courgette. I'm going to put that in too. So this is going to be quite a, kind of a heavy buildup of vegetarian quinoa. Vegetable quinoa, sorry, not vegetarian, vegetable. It's going to be a really nice dish. Uh, and I'm going to put a couple of frozen peas in there too. So that pads it out a little bit, makes it into, you know, a good serving for four people. And I'm just going to put uh, one lemon, the juice of one lemon in here and that'll give it a little bit of liquid. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed coming into the kitchen with me while I'm cooking. I'm basically making you the meals that I'm going to be eating and uh, just showing you how easy it is and simple some of these recipes are. They're not, there's nothing complicated about them. It's just working with the ingredients. So that's one lemon in there. And I just want to cook that a bit slowly. I'm going to put a little bit more of this coriander. You could add a, uh, I've got mango chutney here. You could add one teaspoon of mango chutney, but I've already added some brown sugar in here, so that'll give it a little bit of sweetness with the chili. And basically, that's it in a nutshell. Want to come over and help me eat this? <laughs> what I would do is I'm just going to cook that for a little bit while we're chatting. And that's it, ready. These are really, really simple one pan cooking dishes. And it's amazing what you can do with some ground um, minced beef. And uh, I think I will during the next couple of days. I'll make some sloppy joes. Hi, hi, Kyan. <laughs> Merhaba. Nice to see you, my friend from Turkey on here. And Marilyn and Pam. Pam, it is delicious. I think you like curries, don't you? Hi, Lindsay. I like seeing all you girls coming on. It's to see how simple it is, though, in working with uh, dishes. So your, our coriander is your cilantro, okay, for my American girls. All right. Our courgette is your zucchini, so that you know. Debbie, thank you. You're coming over great. I'm setting the table right now for y'all. I'd love that. Especially when I've been holed up here for a few weeks. Well, we all have. Everybody's in the same boat. Nobody's any different. Hi, Elaine. Oh, you want to know what I'm making? I'm making an Indian beef uh, keema. And keema is made with ground meat. But this is a beef one that I'm making today. So hi, Teresa. You're going to rewatch. Yeah, go back. I mean, if you miss the video or you come in sort of halfway through, what to do is just go back to the beginning, do a replay, and plus at the top of the video, I put all the ingredients there for you too. Remember, you can be versatile with your ingredients. Fiona Perry, how are you? <laughs> Fiona, you want me to do you a carry out? <laughs> I should, I should do curb, uh, what do they call that? Curb takeaways or whatever. Have the people coming over to the house and picking up their carry out. <laughs> anyway, it's so easy to make. I, I hope that you all enjoy it. Miriam, hi. And Marcia from Utah, nice to see you. <laughs> anyway, as I say, it's a simple dish. Another simple one of mine, one pan cooking. Great for the whole family, and as I say, you can add any kind of vegetable in there. You could cut up some cubes of butternut squash and put it in there. 
basically I'm using the vegetables to kind of pat it out a wee bit so that there's a little bit more than sort of just a, a few servings. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's just a kind of a quick video today and uh, hope you get an opportunity to make that in your kitchen. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. You know I always answer you. And thanks for joining me today in Mary's Kitchen. Lots of love. And remember, if you see someone without a smile, give them yours. Bye. See you in a few days.